<clears throat> okay, so I spent a good part of the day just testing the heat treats and I realized <clears throat> I hadn't really done much work comparing the raw uh, coastal plains or Georgia Flint River chert to the heat treated variety. Now this is heat treated to 500 degrees worked out well. That whole box is 500 degrees. <coughs> so I was chipping them in there chipping those that were in there and seeing what they how they compared to the raw stuff. And uh, what I found out is that on some of these some of these flakes there's barely any difference between the raw and the heat treat. With some, there is a pretty good difference. Uh, this particular one was a little bit easier to nap, and but it was easier to run longer flakes for sure. Easier to run longer flakes than on the raw stuff. This came from the same batch, right? So, um, yeah, I can run longer small flakes and longer big flakes whereas on this stuff all the flakes seem to be smoothed out and it's kind of typical of raw stuff uh, the flakes are a little more subdued looking they're not as pronounced as the heat treat stuff but it's still not easy to nap the heat treat not as easy as something like a Texas heat treat where it gets very soft after heating when it's at first very hard. This is very hard and it stays pretty hard. So it goes from very to medium, not very to very soft. It doesn't go from very hard to very soft like a lot of the Texas stuff. Uh, as far as the swirly Georgia chert, this is what I found to be the most affected by the heat treat. This is also 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Much different to nap this stuff than the raw stuff. Let's see. Yeah, this stuff here, the raw swirly stuff, is very difficult to nap. I'm going to heat treat a lot of this. This stuff is difficult because it's kind of coarse and uh, Sometimes it has pockets of inconsistent material and that kind of thing. I've already heat treated like 90% of what I had as far as the swirly stuff. But anyway, you can see a big difference. Now in the color of the of this, the heat treat gets to be a little more orangey in color or even a reddish. As you can see in the box there, some get darker than others. So there's a range. Uh, as far as the Georgia Jasper, this stuff you can nap raw and it's very, very good in many cases. All right, I do only have a few pieces that did not nap well of the Georgia Jasper in the raw state. I have not heated any of this. It doesn't need heat, in my opinion. And as some people say this uh, Coastal Plains does not need heat either. And I tend to agree, it doesn't really need heat, but it does get a little bit better with heat. And it might get even better at 600 degrees instead of 500 degrees. I know that 400 doesn't do much. It does change the color slightly. 500, I can notice a difference in the, in the flaking. I've been selling a bunch of flakes and I haven't really taken the time to do this, so I spent a good deal of time today. Uh, playing around with the flakes Okay, so I also tried knocking off blades uh, This is a pretty clunky piece. So instead of trying to get a biface out of it I was just trying to skin off some blades and it worked out pretty well. I think this is from here Yeah This is really good stuff for, for uh, blade work. I mean, I haven't done much practicing on blade work and if I can do it this easily with this stuff, this stuff's pretty good for that kind of stuff too. Overall, I would give it 
high marks on everything from heat treat to working it raw to making tools out of it. Like these are a lot of these edges, even though they're really thin, they're still extremely durable. Yeah, I can feel that they're gonna last. And you can do a lot of slicing with these, just as they are, just the flakes as is. So if I wanted to use them as a tool for slicing meat, these would be excellent in the raw state. And for making blades, it's also very good. Uh, what else? Yeah, woodworking tools, the scrapers and the saws and stuff. It works well for that too. I was testing some. I was also testing small flakes. It's hard to nap these smaller ones to run long flakes. It takes a lot of force, but it pressure flakes well. It just you just can't run really long flakes like you can on obsidian, for example, even though it's heat treated. This is a 500 degree heat treat as well. Just so I don't forget. Five hundred degrees Fahrenheit. I have a lot of flakes of this size. I recommend pressure flaking these and trying not to run really, really long flakes on it because it's, it's still, even heat treated, it's still kind of tough. All right. So the next thing I'm going to try, I'll do this on video, is I'm going to try to make uh, an axe head out of this. I'm going to... I'm going to try it. We'll see. I have made one a long time ago. And I've used uh, chopper shaped like axe heads that were just big flakes. I've never really tried to nap one down. So I'm going to take a chance on video, see if I can do it without looking like I don't know what I'm doing too much, you know. We'll see. It probably will look like I don't know what I'm doing for a while, and then maybe I'll figure it out. It's already in the general shape of one, so I guess that, that's good for now. And in typical fashion, I didn't do any research before this, because I just wanted to turn the video on. It's already getting late. I just wanted to get videoing. Now, when, uh, when I... When I considered doing this, I knew I was going to waste a lot of material because axe heads are very particular in shape. So I can't uh, I can't try to spall this and try to make an axe head uh, with my experience. Maybe later on, if I do a bunch of these, I'll I'll be in a position to to know better what I can spall off and still retain the shape. Right now I have to be very careful about what I do because I don't want to lose the shape of the axe head. So I've got to take it slow, create little flakes. I'm pretty sure I can get a square edge on. It's going to require square edges all the way around. We'll see. I'm pretty sure I can do it, but we'll see. I can still skin off the cortex and stuff, but I gotta be careful I don't lose too much length on this. I got I got more of this stuff on order, but uh, I can't be ordering too many really, really large pieces. I think I might be able to take a big flake here. And not mess it up. We'll see. We'll see if I... Don't mess it up. At some point I'm going to switch over to indirect percussion because there's no way I can do the square edges with the, the billet. 
as easily as I can with indirect percussion. Get off that cortex somehow. It's got some issues. This might uh, end up being smaller than I want, but it's all right. change strategies here and hit from the side I was gonna to try to skim one off the top here but as luck would have it, it has a natural seam in it right there or a natural crack yeah I don't know, I might be able to do a lot of this work with the billet. We'll see. It's just the order in which it happens, that's the deal. I don't know. I'm gonna skin that off somehow. I'm thinking is I can bevel this and then skin them off that way which means I'm just producing small flakes not really maximizing the yield out of it except for the axe head the potential axe head we'll see probably going to say I don't know a bunch of times during this video okay. now I could do this off camera but I need to do something tonight Kind of risky. All right, let's see.
I've watched a couple of videos on somebody making one of these, but it's been such a long time. I'm not taking any inspiration from it. I just think I can remember the basic shape. And once I get the basic shape, I can try to refine it with the indirect percussion. Yeah, now that, I can't have that happen too often. That's unfortunate. I think we're back on track. I was getting, I was getting worried there for a second. So it's going to be flat. I can flatten this later. I just need to skin off this cortex. Okay, the, the easiest ones are the hardest ones. The easiest looking ones are usually the hardest flakes to take. Because it has to be perfect. Now that's kind of weird, right? Let's see. If I hit that again, I, sh I should be able to pop off the top there. You see what happened, right? Of course it stopped right there. I was trying to go all the way across. That worked a little bit. Okay, let's see. Okay, nice. Lucky. I was lucky. All right. I don't know how I'm going to get rid of that. I can indirect it. Yeah, indirect percussion it. Okay. Got to make sure that I can't do anything else. Looks like I can't do anything else before I start trimming this back. Because once I start trimming this back, that's it. Can't use it. Can't use the material I'm removing. Supposed to have a square edge here and a square edge there. This is going to be the tip, and that's going to be the back, or whatever they call it. to get a basic shape here. I might still be able to run a long flake to get that off. I'm going to have to square up this edge somehow, you know, make it flat. So it's going to lose a lot of width. I'm going to have to clean this up too. 
But what I'm thinking is I can run a, another flake through here. Maybe. I need to get rid of this bump too. So if I run a flake here first and then a flake there, it might work. It might end up being a really narrow axe head though. I probably already messed it up. I should probably stop hitting it with the billet. Basic shape. Okay. All right. Basic shape. Let's Okay. I don't need to swing so I can bring the lamp a little closer. I think maybe the top and bottom, do the top and bottom. I'm not worried about the sides yet. Flatten the top and bottom, and then I can start trimming the sides. Yes, no, maybe. Oops. Yeah, okay. I'll do the top and bottom. Maybe bottom first. So yeah, this could take a while. I'm just going to be nitpicking on the edge for a while. I have intentionally made square edges before, but it's been a while. I should probably do this haphazardly and opportunistically. Yeah. I don't do well with pattern deflaking. Just opportunistically, where whatever I think it's not the axe head, I'll just remove that. Right, right. Yeah, it's a whole different ball game. Okay, let's see. It's kind of like removing blades. Kind of the same principle, I suppose.
I gotta scoop it out like this. I gotta create a concavity that way I can start thinning the sides. But that requires me to go right to the edge without going over. Because if I go over the edge, there's no concavity. There might be a concavity to begin with, but as I get closer to that edge, it just spills over and it's rounded. I can't have it being rounded. So i got to be careful about how far these travel. Can't have that go over the edge. See that one went over the edge. This could take a while. Yeah, it's just good. they're going over the edge. Probably have to start hitting this way to create a scoop out on this side. That way I can thin it. Yeah, I think I can do that. I just gotta watch that I don't, I don't go over the edge. All right. Very messy. Got my got my scoop out. This is gonna be narrow, isn't it? Yeah. Oh well. That was supposed to go all the way. What's wrong with it? I don't know. Stiff fracture. Stiff fractures galore. Come on. I know you can do it. I've seen this technique before. Okay. That's not going to do it. could create a platform and just send a flake this way but then it it's going to take too much off the length i think the length is more important than the, the depth i think Anyway, I guess not too much yapping because I, I got to focus. I 
you try to set up the just the right platform and nothing happens. Alright. That's the way it's gonna be. That's the way it's gonna be, I suppose. It's gonna be. I could zigzag and zigzag and uh, figure out a way to zigzag this one too somehow. Get a good. Let's see. There's got to be a way to get there from here. spot dang it It's not going well. Just cracked it really well. See that? Not good. Yeah, I don't know how I don't know how to overcome those things.
No, it's so odd that I don't I don't have any idea what I'm doing.
Come on. Okay, I think it's, I think I understand what to do. I'm thinking I understand what to do. I'm not going to be able to get a perfectly square edge on both sides, but I could probably get it on one. Yeah. Wearing it down too much. Let's see. I'm not done with this side yet. I just want to get the try to get the front of this blade done at least roughed out. That one just sprayed me in the face with flakes. Come on. These are easy peasy. Supposedly the little ones. Of course, of course it doesn't do it, it doesn't like to be anything, the rock doesn't want to be anything, it doesn't want to be something. Okay. I got an idea, I just, I just grind it to shape, yeah. That'd be a good idea. Why didn't I think of that? Just grind it. No, not like that. Come on, you can do it. It's not that hard. It's not that hard to cooperate.
The rock wants to make it really hard. Funny how that works. Okay. I had to take a big chunk out because that's the only thing it let me do. getting it but it's just lopsided should it I don't know maybe that's a good thing I don't know I gotta look at the real ones come on you did it just a second ago now it doesn't want to do it so finicky but I'm not complaining about the stone I'm just complaining about complaining about the whole operation I gotta be everything's gotta be so finicky can't be random It doesn't want to be something. The rock does not want to be it. <laughs> it doesn't want to be it. Whatever it is I'm doing, it doesn't want to be it. Come on. I know you can do it. There it is. Well, kind of, sort of. Dang it. Still all lopsided. I have to use some creative creativity on this to get it straightened out. Ah, come on, you can do a little bit better than that. Come on, a little bit better. Almost. Mm, almost. Almost did it. So you know, I gotta make. I gotta get rid of this mass here. I gotta get rid of this. These masses on these sides. I could probably shoot a flake that way, but we shall see. I got some curvature now some concavity on this side that I can shoot better flakes. Don't ask me how I did it. I'll have to review the video to see what I did. I'm just working one side, I guess, yeah. Just working this one edge. I suppose if I were to work that one edge here and the same side here, it would It'll even out. And I can jam it into a piece of wood and it will work. Yep. Maybe. It doesn't want to do it. Yeah, I know it doesn't want to do it. We have to convince it somehow. We have to convince it. It needs a little bit of convincing. Yes, yes. How do you do it? I don't know. That's dicey. To run a flake here or through there. It'd be better if I could run a flake up through here. But that would ruin it. 
And what about this big mass here? Do I... Yeah, I can hit down from here. I gotta take off some of this up here to get rid of this mass. We shall see. Dang it, I don't know. Here, look, all the step fractures that I probably created. That's not too bad. Okay. I probably shouldn't grind it, huh? Can't help it. Did it do it? It's starting to do it. Yeah, it's starting to kind of do it. Kind of. That one was bad. But I don't think I need to worry too much about the end here. It's the middle part that, that counts. That's the part that's stuck in the wood. This, pack, this part back here, I'm going to say, doesn't matter too much. Just because. Just because I say so. Yeah. Oh, dang it. A little bit too much gusto, but I don't care. It's just a test run with a bunch of waste flakes down there, a bunch of cruddies. I got a feeling there's a better way to do this. <laughs> what is it? I'm missing something. It's got to be something simple that I'm just missing. Yeah, I don't have practice doing this. That's what it is. Alright, that's the way you're going to do it. That's the way you're going to be. Ooh, that was close. See, if it wrapped around too much, I would have been in big troubles. Very interesting effect. Yes, indeed. That's interesting. Can I keep doing it? I can probably keep doing it. It's not bad. Gonna remember what I did. What kind of edge do I need to prepare to get that done? I can't can't continue a streak forever. Yikes. We're getting somewhere. Are we getting somewhere? Maybe. Maybe if I hit it extremely hard, something magical will happen. I'll knock some sense into it. Maybe. Here we go. Is that it? Ah. Uh. A little bit too hard. Dang it. Yeah, I, that was my fault. Just testing it. Just testing the waters, I suppose. I was hoping for a big, wide flake, but it didn't go. I really don't know what to do on the other side, other than just smack the heck out of it and hope for the best. Oh, 
come on. I know you're gonna do something there. Dum de dum de dum, dum de dum de dum. Dum de dum de dum, dum de dum de dum. I know now. I think I know how to do this next one. When I do another X, I think I know what I know, think I know what to do. Yeah, I think I figured out the sequence. This, is, this one's all lopsided, but I think I can figure out the sequence. Come on, you can do it. Don't have to step fracture so badly. I don't know. I'm just trying all kinds of stuff here now. Okay, grind it from here. We're done. Really? I wish. I was probably supposed to pressure flake some of this, right? Probably. Set up the platforms a little bit better. I, I know the sequence though now. I think I got it. The sequence of flaking to get the square edges and get the faces done just right. After about a dozen of these, I guess. Come on, you can do better than that. Oh, come on. It's not that hard. It's not that hard to cooperate. If I just need a little more straightening. Yep. I can't do that. Hold on. I was going to run the flakes here, but I can't do that because it'll screw up the... It'll make it curved. But that's the only way I can get those step fractures out. Let me just get the step fractures out and then I can take the curve out later. Right? Right. Hopefully. No, not like that. Yeah, kind of like that.
Okay, so how do I take the curve out? That's the next stage. I know. Just take some off the back end. Takes the curve out. Yeah. Easy peasy. But not so not not so fast, not so easy. If I can just get if I can just stop doing the scoop outs like that, if I can just stop doing that, I think I'd be in good shape. I'm not using the sequence, that's what it is. All right, let's focus. Already an hour. Who's still there? Anybody? Anybody still there? Nothing but us measly Mises. Bunch of measly Mises. I just got to remember the proper sequence of removing these flakes and then I can do a little bit of damage control some once in a while. Yeah. I need to take out that curve. I'll pressure flake. I'll pressure flake this later. Right now, I gotta take that, take this lump out of here. Yeah, I don't know. It's gonna get very, very narrow. Yep, and very thin. Probably don't even need to go any further. Just flatten this out. It looks all wonky. Let's see. Not a zigzagging, kind of sort of zigzagging. Kind of hit it in a weird way. Just glancing blows. I suppose this beats uh, sitting there trying to grind it all day. Although the frustration level on this is extremely high. Getting anywhere near it? I take I took most of the curve out. Yeah. Now it's just a matter of picking at it, I guess. Yeah, just picking at it with little flakes. Cause all it needs is when you stick it in the wood, all it needs is top and bottom to be very, very flat. The sides, you don't need to worry about the sides, as far as I know. 
if I was going to use it to chop wood, the sides are not what's what's gripping it. It's gripped on the top and bottom. Yeah, sloppy, sloppy. It's probably too thin also. Golly. Yeah, trying to do Trying to do this without the right platforms is terrible. And there's, I know the sequence for thinning and for squaring up the edge now, but as far as doing the damage control on this, it's all weird. Alright. Yeah, nothing's working. Obviously, nothing's working in the usual way. I just want to make it a little, a little bit neater, but it, I don't know. Yeah, not like that. No, no, no. I hit the bottom with my billet. It slowed it down. And I was only able to take a small flake. Okay. Just get rid of that. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> that looks so funny. Dang it. It's all because of the weird platforms. I'm trying not to scoop it out. That's the hardest thing. Looks so weird. All right, stop fussing. What am I doing? Well, I'm going to try to clean up everything now and regularize it. I don't know if I can, but. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, this takes a long time, but I suppose it is better than sitting there grinding it. Of course, I used to grind these after doing this. You know, they would shape it preliminary with napping and then grind it. The closer you could get it to the final shape with flint napping, I guess it would save a lot of grinding time. Even if I try to regularize this, it's still going to look very, very crude. All right, let's see, let's see what the pressure calculator looks like. It might be too thin, I don't know. It can't be too thick if you want to do woodworking.
So same strategy on the pressure flaking. I think maybe I should have started with a miniature one. This is kind of miniature, I guess. I need a full size easy stick. Although this is not that difficult to pressure flake. A full size easy stick would be better. I could do this with indirect percussion, but it seems to be bouncing off. I can't really get a purchase on this. Every time I try it, I get a step fracture. Also, napping on the wood, I didn't even notice. See what you made me do? I banged up the wooden side. I don't know if I'm doing this right. We'll see. I'll look it up. See what they really look like. I think they actually did grind these uh, the bits, the front part. They did grind these down, right, and left the the rest of it napped. And then, if they had time, they would grind the rest of it down. I don't know. I've seen some with not, not ground down here, but ground up in the front. Right now I'm trying to regularize it. I'm not trying to sharpen it. Obviously. I'm just trying to get trying to get it thickened up a little bit because you can't have it too thin for chopping because it just chips away at the edge. Trying to regularize it. All right, so let's see. Okay. Yeah, this is where it gets weird. If it hasn't gotten weird already. Fix that without percussion. Yeah, I gotta flatten that out and regularize everything.
It gets weird here in the transition part. Trying to level it out, but I'm not doing such a not doing a good job on it. Let's see. Yeah, that's the, that's the issue is the weird angles that I got to strike at. I kind of, kind of don't even want to post this one, but oh well. I'll post it anyway. Yeah, I'm using a spatula tool. Maybe I can get a purchase on these edges better. I don't know. This is the weird part here. I need a different pad. A different style of pad, I think, for these edges. Come on. No. All right. Yeah, this is so wonky that it's it's making me making me all anxious. There's no way I can get to the other side. It's too smooth to do any pressure flaking in any, in any of those directions. So I end up just pressure flaking that and taking it back way too much. Yeah. So I'm going to cut it there and just chuck this up to practice. Yeah, this is, this is about as far as I want to go with this one. I will do another one. And another one. Yeah, it won't take me much. It won't take me too long to, to uh, grind that down and, and test it out. Not this part. I'm not going to grind this part. This bit up here. Uh, do some fine edge work on that bit and then mount it into a stick. I can chip this a little bit better by hand. I gotta get a handle on flattening this without scooping it out. I gotta figure that out. I already know the sequence I need to get these uh, ridges, okay? The, the problem now is just to get this flat without these scoop outs like that and then regularize it I gotta start with a much bigger piece the problem I had mainly is getting a purchase on these platforms it, it requires you to zigzag yeah yeah that's the problem it requires you to zigzag and then not not every strike is perfect so you get all these weird contours Yeah. I'm going to get like on the on the front part, I don't know if there's a V there or if it's it, uh, the V starts back here. There's a V start up there. 
or back here. You know what I mean? There's, there should be a V right here. Right, and then the edge. But does that V start up here? Can I start it back a little further? If I start it back a little further, it's a little easier. Or do I, does it have to be like this with the V right up next to the next to the bit or the, the blade edge? This is what I mean by the V, this thing. Can I start it back there? Because if I can start it back further, it'd be easier. Yeah. Cause I need to get I need to get this edge squared up. Alright, whatever. Let's see. I have to I have to keep this one. There's no way I'm gonna get rid of this one. Five and a quarter. Um, just for reference. So that's the basic shape. I've got to figure out and watch some videos, I guess, on how to get the key. The, the key is these edges here. That one, that one, this one, and that one. Yeah. But they're easily messed up with uh, any flake that doesn't work right easily messed up those ed those uh, edges it easily messes up those edges if you don't get the uh, the flaking right like if it scoops it out a lot it messes up your chances to either side of, of getting more good flakes yeah it's getting late I need to go to bed alrighty that was my attempt so far. I just was winging it, as you could tell. Okay, let's see.